So we've been learning about linear patterns and linear functions. And now we're going to talk about something called arithmetic sequences, which are related um, because they give us a pattern that's very similar to a linear pattern. So a uh, definition real quick here is this. An arithmetic sequence is an ordered list of numbers that is... Uh, the difference between each consecutive pairs is uh, is the same or is constant, okay? So the, dif the difference between them is constant. That's the key or the same. So uh, let's do a little exploration here. And uh, we have a, p a pattern, a, a few patterns. Uh, this first one, we've got some stars. And we want to find the pattern in the number of sides of the stars, okay? So uh, n is the, the group number, okay? Uh, we got five groups here. And what I want you to do is figure out the number of sides and record them in the table and graph it. On this next one here, we're going to figure out the number of circles in each drawing. We've got five drawings. And we're going to get a different number of circles for each one there. And uh, then we're going to graph our pattern. And then we'll do one more on the next page uh, that's similar. Okay? So, again, you're just going to come back here starting with the first one. And we've got, this is our first set of drawings. And there are, uh, well, let's see how many. Let's start with this one. There's five points. But around each point, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There's two lines connected to each point. You can think of it that way. So the first one is ten. I'll let you count the rest and go from there, so on and so forth. So uh, pause the video, try those out, and come back and see what you get. All right, hopefully you uh, counted up all those patterns and graphed them. And we should get something like this. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 is the uh, total number of sides because each one has 10 sides. And we're going to graph those points here. The first number was 10. Whoa, that's kind of large. Let's fix that. So the first one is 10, the second one's 20, the next one's 30, 40, fifth one's 50, sixth one's 60. And so we get a nice pattern there. Now we're not going to connect them with a line, but you can see that they make a nice straight line like our linear patterns. For our next one here, we've got the number of circles. For the first set of drawings, there's two circles. Second set of drawings, we've got three. Next one here, we've got one, two, three, four circles. Next one, we should have one, two, three, four, five circles. And six circles. Let's graph those points. The first number was two circles. The second drawing had three circles. The next one had four. The next one had five. And the fifth one had six. Okay. So there's our pattern. Again, we're not going to connect them because there was no other number. There, there's no 1.5 drawing, so we can't put a point there, so on and so forth. Let's check the next page. So here we have another pattern. If you didn't get a chance to do that, pause the video real quickly and try that out. But we should get some numbers like this. Uh, for the first row, we have two dots. Second row, we've got four dots. Third row, we got six. And we got eight. Uh, and if we have five rows, we have ten. Okay? So that's the number of rows. We've got one row there. Here we've got two rows. Here we've got three rows, so on and so forth. So we see a pattern. we got even numbers, right? Two, four, six, eight, ten. Okay? So there's our even numbers. And so the first one is ten. I'm sorry, two. First one's two, second one's four, six, eight, ten. Okay, and again, we see they're going in a nice line, uh, but we're not going to connect the line because uh, it is uh, not a linear relationship. This is what we call a sequence. Okay, so this list of numbers is called a sequence. So the question here is, how can you use an arithmetic sequence to describe a pattern? Okay, can you think of an example from real life? Something that's... Uh, 
a pattern. Maybe you have a little job and you get paid for every hour you work. And if you work one hour, you get, uh, I don't know, you get $10. You work two hours, you get $20. You work three hours, you get $30, so on and so forth. Okay. Uh, Maybe uh, you can, you know, how many uh, pairs of shoes you have. If you have two pairs of shoes, well, one pair of shoes, you have two shoes. Two pairs of shoes, we have uh, four. Three pairs of shoes, we have six shoes, so on and so forth. Um, So how about, here's a problem, okay. Uh, We got the real life situation. Uh, Water is H2O, two hydrogens and one oxygen in a molecule. So if we have one molecule, how many atoms do we have? Well, we have three. If we have two molecules, how many atoms do we have? We got one, two, three, four, five, six of those little guys. And here we have we have three atoms, uh, three molecules. Sorry, we got nine. If we have four atoms, uh, four molecules. Sorry, we got twelve atoms. If we have five molecules, we have fifteen atoms. Okay. And there's a pattern, and that is an arithmetic sequence. As we can see, we're going up by the same rate every time. We're going up by three every time, okay? All right. A couple quick vocabulary here. We're talking about a sequence. A sequence is an ordered list of numbers, okay? That is a sequence, okay? Every one of those numbers is called a term. A term is uh, one number. Let's see if I can write a little more neater here. One number in a sequence. All right? So that's a term. Now, an arithmetic sequence is a sequence that uh, the terms change by a constant number. A constant difference. Okay? A constant difference. They change by a constant difference. So all that means is that they go up and down by the same amount. Okay? Uh, and a constant difference or a common difference is that uh, same... Uh, number uh, when you subtract uh, the terms, the consecutive terms specifically. Okay, and we'll see that here in just a second. So, okay. So here's an example of an arithmetic sequence. Uh, If we have... Uh, An arithmetic sequence, the difference between each pair of consecutive terms is the same. The difference is called a common difference or a constant difference. It's the same. It never changes. If we take 10 and 5 and subtract them, we get 5. Take 15 and 10 and subtract them, we get 5. Take 20 and 15 and subtract them, you get 5. So these are the terms, 5, 10, 15, 20, and they go on forever. They have a specific starting point, but they go on forever to the right. And it's arithmetic. Excuse me. It's arithmetic if it goes up by the same thing every time. Okay. So how about this? Is this an arithmetic sequence? Five, seven, nine, eleven. Is it an arithmetic sequence? Yeah, it is. And the common difference is two. Okay. How about this sequence? Is this an arithmetic sequence? Well, we're going from 8 to 3 to negative 2 to 7. We're going down this time. Uh, and, well, let's see what's happening. What's uh, 3 minus 8? That's negative 5. Uh, negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5. Negative 7 minus negative 2. Watch out with your negatives there. Negative 7 minus negative 2 is negative 5, because that is subtracting negatives like adding. Okay, so we're going down 5 every time. So yes, okay, 
the common difference is two. Uh, negative, I'm sorry, my bad, is negative five. That guy right there, that's our common difference. Okay, how about one more? Let's try one more pattern. So here we have a pattern, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. Looks like a nice pattern, but the question, is it a arithmetic pattern? Well, 4 minus 2 is 2, 8 minus 4 is 4, 16 minus 8 is 8. Uh, no, we're not going up by the same thing every time. We're going up 2, we're going up 4, we're going up 8, we're going up 16. Okay, so not arithmetic. It doesn't have the common difference. So an arithmetic sequence is basically a linear pattern. That's the idea, okay? And so we have a way of finding this. Uh, this is, uh, we, we don't really have a, a y-intercept because this, we call this the first term here. This is the first term, second term, third term, fourth term. So this is kind of like the y-intercept, but it's actually when uh, kind of when x equals 1 or n equals 1, okay? So the way we write an equation is like this. If we take the first term and we add n minus 1 of the differences, we can get to any term. So if you want to get to the fourth term here, uh, let's take this one, number 1, okay? Uh, A1, that is what we call, A1 is what we call our uh, first term. This is called the subscript. We'll sometimes say this A sub 1, which is, means A subscript 1, which all that means is the first term. Okay, so A sub 1 is 5. And the difference there was, well, what are we going up by every time? We're going up by 2. So according to this formula here, I should be able to find any term by taking the first a1, okay, and adding n minus 1, n minus 1 times the difference 2. Okay, there's our formula. Let's try it out. What is the fourth term? Let's find the fourth term. So a sub 4, the fourth term should be 5 plus... 4 minus 1 times 2. Well, uh, 4 minus 1, that's just 3 times 2. So this is 5 plus 3 times 2, which is 6, which is 11. And is 11 what we had for the fourth term? First term, second term, third term, fourth term. Right there it is. Okay, let's try one more. What about this pattern number 2? Okay, pattern number 2. So our first term was 8, and our difference was negative 5. We're going down by 5. So according to our, our formula here, we should be able to find any term, a sub n, that's kind of like saying y, equals the starting value plus n minus 1 of the differences. Okay? Okay. And there's our formula. If we want to try to find the fourth term, well, we could find a sub 4, which is 8 times 4. Oh, sorry, not times. Let's fix that. 8 plus 4 minus 1 times 5. Okay, and that's 8 plus 3 times 5. That's 8 plus 15, which is... Uh, oh, ah, watch out. Made a mistake here. What's my mistake? This should be a negative 5. Yeah, I caught my mistake there. So this is 8 minus 15. 8 minus 15, and that's going to be negative 7. Is that what we had up here? Negative 7 it is. So our formula is the first term plus n minus 1. That's always going to be the same times the difference. And that is the formula that will give us any term. You want the 50th term? Plug in 50 here and you'll get the 50th term. You don't have to find all the ones in between. So there's arithmetic sequences. That's how it works. So go ahead and you can continue on to your assignment problems there and give those a try.